You're listening to To Hatchapod with Key Budge, Corey Costello, and Greg Garrett. To Hatchapod time again, Key Budge, Greg Garrett, Corey Costello. Gentlemen, how are you today? Doing good, Key. Fantastic. I do have to, uh, I made a mental note, ask you how you're doing, because last time I forgot, because I get into this other shifted gear of doing mini podcasts, and today's guest that we're going to have on has been a feature in two of the mini podcasts that we've done. Oh, yeah. Mini Power. podcasts are going well, I've heard. Yeah, we're getting some very positive feedback. Yeah. So That's maybe awesome. little snippets. Yeah. Yeah, it, a little teasing what's going on around the community. And Jeanette Power from the Greater Tehachapi Chamber of Commerce has been joining me on those monthly updates. And today we invited Jeanette in for a full conversation. So Jeanette Welcome back to Tehachapod again. Quickly, a three-time guest. <laughs> I know. I know. I feel like it's like Saturday Night Live. I should be getting an award of some That's sort. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there's some controversy, you know. <laughs> I mean, going on, you know. Right. Can't please everyone, I suppose. <laughs> We're just trying to get information out. <laughs> and we've, we've had an opportunity to meet with you uh, several times, you know, different events, and then also having meetings talking about you know, the chamber moving forward and how the city can be a part of that, that fabric and, and, and working together. But the community, this is our, in, our introduction of Jeanette to the community through Tatchpot. We've all selfishly been having these conversations with you and now we're able to share it. So we'll kind of rehash some of the things that we've talked about in these other meetings, I think, because the, the chamber has a, a new energy. And that, I definitely see that as what you were you were bringing to the table today. So, so thank you very much for taking the time to fit us in. But already in the short time you've been there, you've already infused a lot of energy into the chamber. Well, thank you. I appreciate that very much. I asked my husband on my way out the door today. I said, "How long have I worked there?" And he said, five weeks." And I went five weeks down, five more to go. We're gonna get it. <laughs> <laughs> what was the What was the transition like? I mean, you. I know you all were living up here, and you were in real estate, and then this opportunity at the chamber come up. So, what was the sort of thought process for you to sort of make that shift, and uh, and why did you want to choose and and to to come and work at the Great Attachment Chamber of Commerce? But, you know, the decision actually started about a year ago. May 5th, my father died very unexpectedly. And my dad was a huge supporter of his local city and, and actual government for the state as well, and a big nonprofit believer. And I'd been in nonprofits up until, still, up until real estate. Sorry, to hatch be allergies. <laughs> um, that one killed me the other night. Um, so I'd been involved in nonprofits up until I was involved in real estate. And I really loved real estate. But then my dad died very unexpectedly. And I felt like I wanted to get back to a nonprofit. And I thought long and hard as to what that would look like. Do I want to go back into education? Do I want to go back into archaeological preservation? Do I want to go into advocacy? And this opportunity kind of organically came about. And I thought long and hard about it. And I saw a phenomenal opportunity for me to help and advocate and promote the local businesses of Tehachapi. And I'm very excited for this opportunity. Very glad that you chose Tehachapi. And, you know, you think about the Chamber of Commerce, this is super important, right? When we talk about local revenues coming and going out of people's pockets, businesses, small, medium, large businesses, this is what makes a community strong, right? The commerce in a local community. We talk about shopping local. That's what you're doing. You have members and you're, you're promoting those, those members and those businesses. You're helping educate them. You're just pushing them forward. Sometimes they're pushing us forward, but we're all going forward in the same direction, pulling on the same rope. That's right. That's right. And both my parents owned small businesses, and my dad's business became very large, and he sold it off later on. Um, but uh, everyone in a business is affected, and, and it's tremendously important that you have someone who can promote and advocate on your behalf or point you in the direction where you need to go if you have questions and problems. And especially now, it seems like every time we turn around, you know, COVID, mm -hmm. And now we're looking at, I, I don't even want to use, use the word recession, but you know people keep talking about it. Interest rates are going up. Mm -hmm. So we have another mountain to climb, but we're going to climb it together and we're going to conquer that mountain together. That's right. That's right. And you know I have had the opportunity just this week alone, uh, there's a local woman who was having issues with her billing and she didn't understand why she was being billed or actually tripled what she should have been built for a, uh, I won't disclose the company. And she sat down. It took us seven hours to clear that billing situation. But we did it. I asked the questions. She just was overwhelmed because it had a lot of technology involved and she's just a mom and pop. And so we were able to work through it and get the billing corrected and actually get it refunded to what she had been overcharged. But it's just, you're, it's just um, 
yeah, that, that's my that's my new job is to advocate <laughs> and promote and, and help you out. And, and, and one woman show or do you have volunteers or looking for part time help? How is that working? Yes, out? yes. And yes. So it's a one woman show right now. But I am very fortunate that I do have some volunteers who ha- are helping with the ribbon cutting. I have a phenomenal young woman who's tremendously talented in marketing and public relations, uh, Sarah E. Diaz. Uh, she's also a realtor at Country Real Estate, but she's been helping me with my Facebook. She's helping me m- with my rebranding. So we have lots of volunteers. So if anyone is interested in volunteering, I'd love to talk to you. I think that you you hit on it a few times, but talking about the advocacy piece, um, you know, dealing with small businesses myself on a lot of occasions, you realize that um, these folks being very small operations are for the most part married to their business when it's open and they're married to it when it's sometimes closed as well. There's not a lot of time for them in the day to go out and handle things like utility bill questions or what legislative things are out there that might be impacting them when it comes to employment laws and that sort of thing. Uh, it's very hard to peel them away from from their actually operating their business. So uh, I think that that advocacy piece, whether it's local advocacy, state advocacy, national advocacy, or even just the little uh, help here and there, it is super important for the role of the chamber. Well, you know, the one thing that has surprised me uh, I've actually talked to Assemblyman Fong and Senator Grove. You know, they absolutely love Tehachapi. And they are very, very familiar with Tehachapi and its needs. And they can see what's coming down the pike by, from our surrounding sister cities, for the lack of a better word. And um, I was surprised at how truly knowledgeable they are about mm-hmm. this community and, and their, their ties to this community. So and, it was wonderful and talking I've, to them. And I've spoken to some of their reps in the past. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, we some, they, they keep up on what's happening in Tatchby. Part of this is the podcast. They do a lot of listening to that. But they've made comments that, you know, they maybe don't visit Tatchby as much as they would like. But they've, they've made the point that, you know, you guys have so much community help. And, and you guys do such a great job of helping each other that – there's not a need for us to be in town all the time at every single event. You know, you're not uh, asking for the assemblyman or the state senator to be at everything because you, you guys have got it. Or there's not a lot of problems that come across their desks from this community. So that's a great testament, not just to the city, but the entire community is we're represented by, by those state representatives. And all of those representatives attend the monthly luncheon. Yeah. And I think that's important to, to point out to the listener because if you have an issue or you have something you'd like to discuss – Vince Fong, Shannon Grove, mm-hmm. and Kevin McCarthy's representatives attend, and Kern County mm-hmm. uh, attend the monthly luncheons. Right, and after the luncheon, we meet, go back to the Chamber of Commerce, and we'll talk about what's coming down the pike that they see or that they're fighting for. So, for instance, Senator Grove is very concerned about VA vets not being able to get into housing because of this housing market being mm-hmm. very crazy. So she wanted a local realtor. So I set her up with someone, but um, someone who could keep her uh, informed as to what the housing is doing, how many VA loans are going out. Uh, so that's something that, that they're very concerned about. But what we're going to try and do is have what they call as ledge days, which mm-hmm. I had never heard of, yeah. but they're going to try and have uh, hours prior to either the luncheon or to immediately after the luncheon where representatives can meet you and schedule time uh, because of restrictions in COVID. They're they're not allowed to do it just yet, but once those restrictions are listed, lifted, then they will start using the Chamber of Commerce's boardroom for meeting with local people who have concerns or questions. And if you need City Hall's conference room, we have a couple. I'll just offer Fantastic. that now because there may be a crowd talking to Senator Grove, but you know Vince Fong's crowd may want to talk about something else. We can utilize City Hall assets also for that. Absolutely, because the, we have three different reps. So thank you. I appreciate that. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the the things that I think is is really good is when we start to bridge together, you know, and helping each other out, supporting each other out. Greg, I mean, here you are, you know, part, just in the conversation, you're willing to, you know, make an asset available, you know, that benefits the entire community. And that's how we try to work together. So to your point, Corey, about the feedback you get is that Tehachapi seems to always try to be a, a problem solver. Yeah. You know, you've solved a problem for a, a, a businesswoman who was having some difficulties. I mean, we're problem solving, you know, you can have problems, but you know, sometimes it's good to let's work through it together. Where's the yes. Where's the, the fix in this. And it has nothing to do with party affiliation. It right. has to do with representation. Mm-hmm. That's correct. And that's what we're talking about. Right. And then, so with that, you know, we also throw out the coffee with the mayor too, because that's something that, that I think is, you know, we'd love to see you out there, at those two, because that's another opportunity when people come and they'll talk about maybe potential businesses and things like that at coffee with the mayor and, and throw things against us. And, you know, if Jeanette, if you were there, I think that's another, another, yeah. 
you know, resource for people. Yeah, it's good. And that those are the things too. I mean, when, when I deal with a lot of the, you know, development side of things or people coming to either start a business, you know, they're, they're starting a new small business, or maybe they're even a large business, uh, you know, a franchisee or a corporate structure, you know, they, they come in and they, they, they get everything built and they're ready to open and attach, but they always ask, okay, what's my next step? And I always tell them two things, join the chamber and then join the EDC, the two things that I say to be a part of because each serves a purpose and each will benefit the, the business, whatever size, uh, in, in one way or the other. And I, I point that out a lot too. I think a lot of folks focus a lot on small business, which is very important, but even some of the chains, so to speak, our local franchisees, you know, our, our McDonald's operation is local. That's a local operation. Those are hiring local people. Uh, they pay a franchise fee to McDonald's to keep that store open every year. Uh, and so it really is kind of a small business, even though it's got the giant corporate structure around it. Um, and there's a few of those other examples out there too. So I think it's really important to attach, you know, get those people connected. And, and the chamber is always one spot, always, always send them that direction. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that. And I look forward to those opportunities to, to help those businesses grow and, and find their feet here. Mm-hmm. Well, let's uh, continue on, on Corey's part where he, he bridged in the EDC. You're present at the EDC meetings. And that's where I think I first got the opportunity to meet you was at this, those meetings. People can reach out right there at the, the meeting if they get there early during the networking. And if they're not a member of the chamber, they can take that opportunity to join the chamber at that time or ask you how they go ahead and do that. Absolutely. Yeah, the meetings start at 730. But if you can get there at seven, it's it's best mm-hmm. so you can meet and mingle. They try to keep their schedule very tight in respect or to be respective. Sorry, again, Sudafed and a couple of espresso <laughs> shots <laughs> later <laughs> um, to, to, to make sure that people can leave in a time to open up their businesses. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. I'm always there. Um, and um, come talk to me or, or email me at commerce at our chamber at tehachby.com. And that's the first Wednesday every month yep. at 7 a.m. 7.30 is meeting time, but yeah. 7 to 7.30 is really the networking. Yeah. Um, it, you know, uh, I think it, you have coming up, it's something you brought back. Um, you know, just it's a little delayed this year, but uh, the uh, the installation dinner of your, your board and also re- recognition of Citizen of the Year, uh, large and small businesses of the year. So uh, small business, we have got a couple city businesses represented, Hydrochrome being the small business of the year mm-hmm. and Waste Management, who does, business in the city and county but they have they're the franchise hauler for the city uh or the large business of the year and uh citizen of the year we we couldn't like be happier about this drum selection. roll please yeah <laughs> we absolutely love lewis brown yeah. he is a phenomenal man he pretty much keeps he's got a great board of folks over there at the senior center yeah. but lewis is one of those like i don't know how old he is but he's at the senior center and i have to tell him a lot of the time you know, he's like, oh, I painted this ceiling. And I'm like, Lewis, don't get on. No, <laughs> like we'll send city crews over to paint this, man. Don't yeah. don't go up on a ladder and paint. But he is so proud of that facility. He does so much work in that facility. And um, yeah, I go to their board meetings because it really is the greatest group of volunteers out there as the senior center folks. And their meetings are, are really entertaining. Um, and they do a lot of good for the senior citizens. So uh, great selection on Lewis. He's, he's an amazing human being. Well, it was really interesting talking to him. He's like, I don't think I deserve this. <laughs> Award. We're, we're, there's just not a lot of nominees well, this year. That makes it even better, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, were, was there just a lack of choices? <laughs> and, and I read the letters that were submitted about him. He's like, oh, well, I, I did do that. And I did do that. No one told you about the time I was in a play, did they? Yeah. No, yeah, he's no. reacted with TCT. <laughs> yeah. I said, no, they didn't tell me about it. Oh, no, no, no. I was just curious. And he goes, well, I guess I kind of did stay busy during COVID yeah. and I just kind of laughed. He was so humble. Was just the lack of applicants. This year, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he does a great job. The whole senior center board is very engaged and, and they do a lot of great things for our senior citizens, at the senior center, but he's, he's on top of it, you yeah. know, and his fantastic selection. He's genuinely loved by the yeah. people around him. So that's Absolutely. May 21st out at, uh, out at the Stein Springs community center. Yes, it is. And we're going to have a wonderful band after the event. Uh, mean Jean B- Baker. I don't know if you've ever uh-huh. heard of MGB, mm-hmm. but he's going to be playing afterwards and, it's just going to be a good celebration. And yes. if the general public wanted to attend, they could buy tickets for that? Yes, absolutely. Eventbrite. Just go to Eventbrite. Okay. It's nice. under the Chamber of Commerce installation dinner. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Very nice event. Yeah. And then because we've got the installation dinner in May, we're not going to do a luncheon in May. And we're going to move the luncheon, the monthly luncheon, to June. That's correct. And then you've got... Someone special coming in in June, if I if I Just, do remember correctly. Well, a local Tehachapi native, right? Okay. His name's Kevin Rohr. He's going to be the director of the Antelope Valley Air Show, 
and he is also the head chief public relations officer for NASA. So he's going to talk about what's going on in aviation and aerospace and, of course, the air show. He's going to do lots of Q&A, which, you know, this community loves aerospace, so I expect a lot of questions and answers. Uh, There's a rumor that there's going to be lots of swag. Lots of cool NASA, NASA stuff. NASA loves their stuff. Oh, we could, yeah. we could load everyone's Dickers, while at City Hall. I know Kevin yeah. stopped by. Yeah, here's yeah. a bunch of calendars. Uh, here's some pins. I have a, a NASA <laughs> sticker on my uh, on my iPad. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, so lots of swag. Um, and then um, there's going to be lots of people who work at NASA, too, who are going to be attending to kind of field questions as well. Mm. My, my husband will be there. He's the director of operations for the X-59, which yeah. is a supersonic airplane. So he's like, in case anybody wants to ask questions about supersonic, that's a pretty I'll be in the corner. That's an well, interesting <laughs> project, though. It really is what that technology could lead to in terms of commercial flight in, in the future. Right, and that's kind of what NASA does. You know, If you think about all the innovation and research and development that they do, it goes to the... The, the community, mm-hmm. it, they don't hog it and keep it for themselves. They, they develop it for um, people to use. Yeah, the space program has is, is, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, birthed a lot of technology. And that'll be the second Tuesday in June, and tickets also Eventbrite? Also Eventbrite. We're expecting 100 people for that, and we have to cap it off at 100. So normally, if if you don't make a reservation, we won't reject you at the door. But this one, just physically, the fire marshal will not allow any more than 100 people. (laughs) So, you know, it's going to go up for um, where you can get your tickets probably the third week in May. So then you'll be able to get your tickets at that point in time. And that's a big papa's. That's yep. a big pop yep. is at noon. So oh. put a calendar reminder in your phone right now. June 21st. Mm-hmm. To yeah. buy your tickets come so June 21st. Great food, great speaker. Or oh, May yeah. 21st. May 21st, yes. not June 21st. I well, think the event's said, June yeah. 21st, but the tickets will go up the third week of May. Okay, perfect. So you get you have a whole month to get those in line. Now, the Chamber, every year, Mountain Festival is your baby. So I, and I'm, I, I can't think that you just wait till a few weeks before (laughs) to put it together. I'm thinking this is probably a a year long plan and you're going to try and do this in six months. Yep. And we will, we will. It's the 59th mountain festival. And the theme this year is a mountain homecoming. It was actually kind of spurred by a conversation with Greg about multiple generations come back to the festival. You know, everyone knows that weekend and and they plan their family trips, their reunions. Uh, And then I was talking to someone else who mentioned that, uh, it's homecoming weekend for the, the high school as well. Yeah. And so this, one of the submissions by David Shaw was a mountain homecoming. And so it just seemed really fitting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're, it's the theme this year is a mountain homecoming. Uh, we already have a, about a half of the vendors already signed up. All the food vendors are signed up. Uh, we're working on the beer garden uh, alcohol permit right now and insurance and a few other things. But it's coming together and it's going to be a lot of fun. And, and with, you've you've only been here five weeks. I know, I know. <laughs> you've already got all the food vendors lined up, and half of the other vendors. That that blows me away because I know how big this event is. Yeah. And the coordination with TMRA, Touch Mountain Rodeo Association, for the rodeo. Same yes, weekend. yes. I met with them. Wonderful, wonderful gentlemen. Uh, yes, that is a uh, phenomenal event. So we actually just launched a website yesterday, Touch Mountain Festival. Uh, you can go take a look at it. We've had websites in the past. This one just has more or a better picture and as well as the schedule of events. Nice. And car show downtown? Car show downtown. All right. That's, car- that's always a, a crowd favorite. And this oh, year yeah. you've, uh, again, I know there's been some, there's been log- logistical yeah. challenges. So in the past there's been a carnival um, where the carnival used to be is right. being developed now. Uh, but also there's logistical issues with getting carnival rides and people and just getting them employed in California anymore is tough. So you've actually partnered with the Apple Festival folks to put the carnival piece at the Apple Festival for the second year in a row, correct? That's, that's correct. So the long story short of it is I've talked to every licensed and insured carnival in the state of California. And during COVID, they were not allowed to be open yeah. because it wasn't considered essential personnel. So... A quarter of them went bankrupt. A quarter of them sold their businesses. And the other half moved to out-of-state areas. So they're in Utah, Oregon, and Colorado. That's those, those states they choose, uh, that they chose. And basically, they were able to reschedule their routes. Mm-hmm. So they figured every six hours, they plan a route. It minimizes the stress, minimizes the travel, minimizes the cost of gas and transportation. Mm-hmm. They didn't have the restrictions that here we, we do in California. So the reality is, is 
carnivals will be leaving the state of California over the course of time. So no carnival at the Mountain Festival this year. It will be in conjunction with the Apple Festival, right. which is later in the year. Right. Okay. We luckily have the carnival guys who get to store their equipment here in California. So but there's still tons to do for Mountain Festival weekend. Oh my gosh, Please tons. come, yeah. Tons Lots and tons. To do. Yeah. We have jumping castles, we've got face painting, we've got uh, live bands, and I'm working on getting a kid's rodeo, uh, a bunky bull. Nice. Oh, yeah, with cool. gymnastic pads around it. So There you go. We That's should get good. a dunk tank. We could put the mayor in the dunk tank. That's a money raiser right there. Oh, <laughs> wasn't that? <laughs> Did you just volunteer here? Oh, I can't, <laughs> yeah. I can't believe I just said that. Put Greg in the dunk tank. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to dunk Phil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there'd be a lot of people to pay to dunk me, I'm sure. <laughs> now, you've also got some ribbon cuttings that are coming up. Uh, celebrations of business, new business. Are we doing anniversary ribbon cuttings? I know that was something that had been once or twice. It seems like it was something Couple new. Couple times, yeah. yeah. We we will be doing those in the future. We will be doing this in the future. We don't have any scheduled right now. Okay. And then what was we, you do have a ribbon cutting that is coming up for? Is it Golden Hills IT? Yep, Golden Hills IT is the twenty eighth at four o'clock, and um, you know Daniel Burgess has been working really hard to get his business up and running. Great guy. So it's going to be uh, April twenty eighth at four o'clock, and that is nine seven nine West Valley. Yeah, right behind right Fast Trip. Yeah, near Canine yep. Creek. Yep. yep. So, folks, if you're if you're listening, this is Jeanette Power with the Greater Tehachapi Chamber of Commerce. Jeanette is five weeks into this position as the president of the chamber and moving it in a positive direction. And we just it, the energy that you you brought it, it continues. So, in five weeks, you haven't lost any of that beat. You know, <laughs> from when we first met with you on day one, it was like you were moving, and it's like, okay, I'm going to take it all on, and you're you're taking it on. So that's, and this was probably the first, that the main attribute that I kind of thought of, um, you know, when this, this opportunity availed itself and, and that was kind of my thought and I shared it with a few people is the the biggest thing is going to be energy because there's so much to do with such a limited amount of people. And so you got to do it all and you got to have the bandwidth to do it all as well. Uh, so I think, yeah, you've checked that box so far with the energy. <laughs> well, well, thank you. I may not have lost momentum, just sleep. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know, I heard, I heard Arnold Schwarzenegger one time talk about that, about, uh, you know, his, his, journey right as a bodybuilder and then an actor and then you know governor of california and so on and so on and he said you know people say they don't have time because we'll have to sleep six hours and he said we'll sleep faster <laughs> you know like just sleep faster like you've got more time to make and so yeah you can you can sacrifice a little bit of sleep it's all right yeah i sleep very well there you go exactly it's quality it's over quality, quality. Yeah. yeah i sleep very well and then the website to hatchby.com that's going to be revamped and you've you're got a whole plan for that we do we're very very excited about the website um so it's it's going to be completely different it's going to have photos that are really representational of our community by local photographers Stephen oliver and nick schmirnoff um and it's going to have the businesses the community it's, it's going to be a better representation of our businesses here little attached pod player on the front page i'm just saying it could be just oh, that there. could God. be just throwing that out there right well, we there we have to feature the updates uh -huh. that featured jeanette be like, be like yeah, MySpace. Be like MySpace was back in the day. You go on the page and start playing a song automatically. You just start playing Tatchpot automatically. There's, there's so, a throwback to the MySpace days. Can we just like days. focus here? Yeah. It's like Greg's what car. If, Greg's car for some reason throws Tatchpot on every time he gets in and turns it on. It go does. Back to Tatchpot. Well, I've got a COVID car. Everything's wrong. You're, with you're it. not the only person I've had. I, I am not kidding you. I had a member of the community say, for some reason, every time I get in my car and turn it on, it goes to the podcast on your phone, on mm -hmm. my phone of you guys. The other day, <laughs> well, I think Corey you were there i walked by the car and the, the rear hatch opened yeah I'm like it just and opened. Tatch -a started playing i don't know how that <laughs> happened <laughs> I just go a little further. now what about business directory i know in the past chamber has produced a business directory is that still in the queue absolutely absolutely last year i think we published twelve thousand business directories so um i've i'm still giving the rest of them out so i still have some if you're interested in them uh, but yes we will be hitting the business directory i'm actually interviewing three printers right now because as we know everything has gone up yes, so i'm trying to see uh what i can broker mm -hmm. to save our businesses money i but we already have a template at one broker and or a one printer so it may be that he gets the the the, the contract there you go. but yes we are the ref that's a phenomenal guide you know when i first moved here that was like my bible and, and finding businesses to get things done yeah there's f fewer folks use you know yellow pages anymore that's there's, there's right. fewer of those produced uh so something that's business specific 
categorized is, is useful for newcomers and also even someone who just opens a business in this area to find out uh, vendors, suppliers, things they might be able to use as well. It's a good cross-reference tool for them. Yeah, I, I get requests quite often, um, or I should say the majority of them are realtors. When they have someone who moves to the area, they give them a packet and that yeah. referral guide's always in it. Mm-hmm. So it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And let's talk about your social media presence. Okay. We've got a, a new Facebook page. So we find the new page at Greater Tehachapi Chamber. So it's got a new address. It's got a new look and feel, current posts. And are you going to expand beyond the Facebook and maybe add Instagram? Or are we going to stick with Facebook for now? Oh, dreams. TikTok. You know, cav- uh, caviar and champagne dreams. <laughs> no, um, we, we will be expanding it. So okay. I, I do have a phenomenal volunteer. Her name's Sari Diaz. And she is working on our, our rebranding. And once we kind of get a better feel and rhythm for our Facebook, then we will expand that out. And, and we're actually talking about what that should look like and who that should represent and what our target is. So we want to do a little bit more research before... We just kind of blast it out there. But we do want people to follow the page because it is the new one. The, the old page is still up, but we want people to go to the new page. And you'll see with current postings, you'll be able to see it very clearly that the this is the new site. So make sure you follow and then share these posts so that way we can get the Chamber of Commerce exposed to new faces. And we've done the, and, you know, Key and I have done the research and just in our whether it's social media for small business seminars, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, Facebook does it in Tajibi. It's, it is by far still, you know, the, uh, the, the recommended platform or the one that people use the most. Uh, Instagram's kind of second. Twitter is way off. It's just not, it's just not there. It's not a community that we use very, uh, something we use very often. I remember talking to, I think it was Chris Scotty from Discover Tajibi and he said, or maybe it was Claire, but she said, I, when we were down South, everything was moving to Instagram. And when we moved to Tajibi to start this business, we had to kind of go back in time and go back to Facebook because that's where we were able to reach our customers. So I think even just having the Facebook is actually the right spot to, to start for this, you know, to reach out to this community. Right. And there's like 15 to 20 Facebook groups here in Tehachapi like keep it Tehachapi keep it local yeah. what's going on to Tehachapi so there's there's tons of uh of uh venues where we could post and and help each other grow mm-hmm. yeah and I think you'll find with the Instagram when you look at it they, since they're it's the same ownership they talk to each other very well so the posts transition mm-hmm. very well without having to uh click to a whole nother page yeah but uh you know, you, it is a, it's a different audience and we utilize both, you know, and how we talk to the community. That's, that's the goal. That is the goal is uh, a year from now, you and I will have this uh, different conversation on this, but <laughs> that is the goal is to have that as well as what we'd like to create a visual vault, you know, so if people in a, businesses in the local community can use our photos that we take uh, and for their marketing as well. That's so, good. yeah, it's a good idea because they'll either steal them anyway, or you might as well give them permission to do it. <laughs> well, you're right. And, and, and you know, it, the, some of the forward thinking that, that you've already brought in this short period of time. You already talked to me about there's been some interest in people learning how to do podcasts. That's correct. And things like that. So our community is evolving, and, and even though we kind of go back to Facebook, yeah. but we're, we're part of this conversation that's of this growing new medium that we're on right now, and there's other businesses that are interested in maybe doing their own thing. Well, I spoke to three different business owners, and it's really interesting because, you know, COVID forced everyone to go digital. You know, if you're a paper uh, business and you've done all of your record keeping in paper, COVID was a struggle for you. And so they've transitioned to digital, and now they want to learn what's next, what's mm-hmm. next, now that they've conquered that fear. And so they want to start doing podcasts. They want to start doing more social market media. So hopefully in the fall, I'm, I was planning on doing a business development class. I still need to get a survey out to see if this is just a good idea or if people are seriously interested, would they attend? Um, but I know that I have probably the three biggest requests are podcast, social market media, and how to develop an LLC or an mm-hmm. S-Core uh, correctly. Those are the, the qu- yeah. requests. Well, that I, I remember Key and Corey taught a social media class very well received, and we could do that again. So you're volunteering them again? I am. Oh, excellent. <laughs> we'll check our calendars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, it's better than a dunking booth. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, Greg gets a dunking booth. We get to talk to people. I'll that, take that. How did that deal. work out? I don't know. <laughs> you brought it up. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> no, that was a great class. Uh, a lot of uh, positive feedback and, and, and businesses really utilized those tips yeah. and started focusing on what matters the most. And we couldn't have timed because, it better or yeah. worse because COVID hit like three months later and everybody all of a sudden had to go to social media to get anything out, especially the restaurants who needed to get their oh, restaurant yeah. to go special squared away. Yeah, no Johnny's Take and Bake did a great job during that time period yeah. with social Kelsey's, media. Kelsey's, we've talked about Kelsey's. Yeah. Johnny's Take and Bake, they were our sort of, they were part of our panel. So we brought right. them up because they did such a great job uh, marketing themselves. And this was when Amy uh, was, was owning it. She recently sold. But um, they, they were they were marketing themselves, not just, hey, this is what we have on special today. It was like how pizza is in their life, you know, and they've oh, yeah. had it fun. And and so we talked about that with them a little bit. And, they were, and then other folks were able to take that on too. And then COVID hit and it was like, okay, well, good thing they all know. And we saw Kelsey's grow from really not having any social media presence to slowly building and developing an app and being able to really embrace that technology uh, in a short amount of time. Well, Jeanette, you mentioned, you know, COVID forced us to do certain things and we've talked about it before on this show. There was a silver lining. Uh, it's as hard as that is to even say, but COVID forced us to be more efficient mm-hmm. with, with our digital lives. Mm-hmm. You know, this right here, this podcast being one of them. Uh, and so it's, it's really helped everybody in certain ways and embrace, embrace digital networking. I agree. I agree. I think you're absolutely correct. Well, Jeanette, is there anything that maybe we haven't talked about that you'd like to bring up? Um, I can't think of anything right now other than um, I am trying to work with Saracoso on getting uh, classes for the high school students where they can get collegiate credit Mm -hmm. and work experience where they would work as interns at the Chamber of Commerce for business marketing and photography. And so they'll get college credit for that while working and getting internships. So, uh, but there are the the kids who are so savvy with technology mm-hmm. that I think that you know if we can expose them to the business world and have them meet the businesses, see how business plans created, but then they can help with the the social market and media as well. Right. Yeah. Okay. We got a lot going on. You have a lot going on. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> and then every month, Jeanette joins me for a mini pod as we talk about just updating what's going on in the in the coming weeks. So just the monthly calendar, I it, suppose, right? It for is the mini. Yeah, it is. So the, we've got a a this new uh, digital podcast version of a calendar, and Jeanette and I share that, and we do that now every month. We've got two in the can. And that's something that we look forward to doing all the time. I'd even encourage people too to, you know, when you hear those and, and Jeanette talks about maybe a ribbon cutting, if, you, if you're available at that time, pop in, take a look, because it's a chance to really see the business, meet the business owner, right. um, because then you feel more of an attachment to said person when, when you need, maybe it's in the case of Golden Hills IT, right? You need IT services, computer repair, whatever it might be. Uh, and you kind of, you feel like you know the owner and, and then you're really more willing to take business there. So I'd encourage folks if they have the, the ability to do so, you know, pop into those ribbon cuttings, pay attention to where they're at and really get to know the business owners in the community. It makes a difference when you put a name and a face together. Yeah. And this is that open opportunity to come and do that. Mm-hmm. I think it's one of the reasons to hatch be so special is because you do know the owner. You know, I went to Canine Creek on Sunday to buy food for my dog. She already knew what it was. Hey, Jeanette. Hey, Kelly. How's it going? <laughs> yeah. You know, Juno need more dog food treats. Yeah. Yeah. She needs more dog treats. She's like, how's your papasuka going? So, you know, she's super nice. helpful, but yeah, it's one of the things that makes Tatch be so special is that you do know the owners Yeah, and you do have that relationship. Absolutely. And now we've introduced Jeanette Power. If you don't know her, that uh, she is the president of the greater Tehachapi chamber of commerce and Jeanette, welcome to the position. Welcome, um, you know, to this position that, that you've got that you're embracing wholeheartedly and, and we're running alongside you. So, uh, you know, welcome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I'll gift wrap a uh, espresso machine and get it sent over to the uh, chamber office so you uh, can keep going, keep that energy up. <laughs> that Benadryl and espresso shots. That's the key, folks. Perfect. Well, it worked for today. It did. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, anything in closing? I think we're good, Keith. Thank you. Good to go. All right, folks. We appreciate your time here on Tehachapod, and we encourage you to uh, go to the at Greater Tehachapi Chamber on Facebook and then Tehachapi.com. The website is being revamped. So um, if you look at it and it it hasn't changed, it will be very, very soon. So be patient with that. And Jeanette, again, thank you, and we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Send us your show thoughts, media at Tehachapi City Hall, and we will catch you again soon on Tehachapod. 
To Hatch a Pod is a conversation about Tehachapi designed for the people who live here or who would like to know more about this mountaintop community. If you have a question you would like answered, email media at tehachapicityhall.com. We will try to answer it on a future episode of Tehachapod.